This is my favorite type of outline question where they want to have a difference between the two approaches, right? So that's a very easy thing for my brain to comprehend. How are they different, right? So it doesn't matter what the topic is. I understand what it means for things to be different. So we're going to look for that as we read. Again, we're skipping the outline, the bullet itself, the bullet points themselves. I don't care. Let's just look at the choices. Though created using a different process, Rye's dye contains the same ingredients as the dye produced by Blue Jean manufacturers. So maybe that's good. Uh, it says they have a different process, right? So that that might be what we're talking about. But I don't love that it says that they're the same, right? We, we weren't told to also have a similarity. So I don't love that. I'd leave this choice in for sure. But it'll, honestly, it feels a little bit like a trap that they're just using that word difference and different. So I don't know. Let's, let's look at B. Nanocellulose is a natural plant-based substance that separates the molecules of indigo powder, which doesn't dissolve in water. Uh, great. That doesn't talk about the genes at all. So I have no idea what they're talking about. That's not about how they make the genes, uh, they dye them at all. So no good. C, the traditional approach to dyeing blue genes is to dip them in a solution containing hazardous chemicals. Okay, but there's two approaches. So where's the other approach, right? We haven't talked about it. We can't talk about a difference if we only talk about one approach. D, Rye's approach substitutes a natural plant-based substance for the hazardous chemicals that manufacturers have traditionally used. So it's a little sneaky. And this is why I'm even more certain that A was deliberately set up to be a trap and it was put early so that you might just kind of skip and not read the other choices. But uh, the other one, this one here does have two approaches, right? It is Rye's approach, obviously, and it does talk about the traditional approach. So what is the difference between them? Well, the traditional approach uses the hazardous chemicals. Rye's approach substitutes a natural plant-based substance, right? So it does say the difference there. It is not as explicit as like, these are different because... But okay, that makes it maybe slightly a harder question, but I still think it's pretty darn easy, right? If we know what we're looking for, it's there. Now, you should be nervous about something like A. They are going to do that, not just on outline questions, but on all sorts of reading questions. They know that some of you just stop short as soon as you get something that's good enough. You read whatever choice, you kind of like up oh, it's A, and you move on. You don't even bother reading the other choices. Or in your head, you, you commit to choice A. You're like, oh, it's definitely A. And then you read B, C, and D out of like, obligation, but you're not really analyzing those choices. You've already decided that A is right. And so there's nothing you can do other than just pass the time. That's not a good way to approach the SAT at all, right? They do this on purpose. You know now, I hope, that they do this. And so you have to be prepared. And like a judge, you have to wait until all the evidence is presented before you make your ruling, right? So you have to wait until you've read all the way to D before you fully commit to an answer. You'll see me do that pretty much in every video. Very rarely am I like, oh yeah, it's definitely this. And even when I am, I'm still open-minded. It's possible I'm wrong. So you've got to be able to have that kind of unbiased approach to the choices because you never know when they're doing this stuff.